Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at five, just five days out from Inauguration Day, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies are ramping up security over the possibility for more violence at protests and rallies. Plus, President-elect Biden announces his plans for another COVID-19 stimulus plan as soon as he's inaugurated. And it includes more checks for Americans. We'll tell you how much. And here is all members of the public lineup to get their coronavirus shot after the state gives the go-ahead to begin vaccinations for people 65 and older. Where and when you can get yours on this Friday, January 15th, 2021. Good morning. It's 5 a.m. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen here at home this morning. Alex Fisher in studio. And it's going to feel like a spring day today. So definitely get outside for the kids' recess or just get outside for a walk and enjoy that sunshine. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, no, There's no rain in sight. Let's turn things over to Kevin Charette, who has a look at our finally Friday forecast. Kev, just a few more hours till the weekend. Yeah, it's, not, it's right on the way, and it's going to be a nice weekend. We're looking at a nice day today, too. We're going to be more like getting a suntan than uh, needing the umbrella. Um, as we take you outside, though, we are still tracking a little bit of fog, and we'll be seeing that this morning. It'll be patchy here in the valley, but you can see here downtown Bakersfield's good, 99 uh, looking good, and Mohawk at Rosedale, no major issues. But you can see it is starting to enhance itself, uh, areas to the north of us, a little more than yesterday even. And as we take a look at the fog, severity index you can see the trouble spot no surprise we talk it every morning is Merced they're down to zero visibility all other areas from Bakersfield Delano and Fresno at five miles and you can see the dense fog advisory is in place for us until uh, 11 a.m. this morning and nothing into downtown we've got a temperature of 49 degrees a light wind out of the east at five as we take a look at the hour by hour patchy fog to start and then we'll be looking at mostly sunny skies throughout the afternoon and yes I'm putting 70 degrees out there for a high as we take a look at to hatch be 49 degrees right now under a calm wind and as we take a look at the hour by hour you can see yes upper 60s even some lower 70s throughout the afternoon as well i'll have more on your forecast is coming up in just a little bit for now back over to you all right thanks kev split duty the u.s senate is trying to figure out whether they can try president trump and handle president-elect biden's agenda at the same time he wants to get started on economic recovery right away can congress get that done during an impeachment trial Tracy Potts has the latest from Capitol Hill. Good morning, Maddie. We're still waiting to hear when House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will send over that article of impeachment. She hasn't said, and that's what will trigger the impeachment trial. The earliest possible start for an impeachment trial is Wednesday, Inauguration Day, one hour after Joe Biden is sworn in as president. It's hard to predict how many will come down uh, on the side of conviction. With our NBC News poll showing the country almost evenly split on impeachment and removal, a handful of Republicans are considering it. I believe this president violated his oath of office, and I believe there must be consequences. What good comes from impeaching, impeaching President Trump after he's out of office? That's an unconstitutional attack on the presidency. It will divide the country. It will incite violence. According to the New York Times, an intelligence bulletin warns of extremists planning a race war. We're concerned about the potential for violence at multiple protests and rallies. Members of Congress are concerned about their safety. Many of us are, are altering our routines, um, uh, working to get body armor. We're going to ensure that we have a safe inauguration. President-elect Biden announcing his post-inauguration plans, a $1.9 trillion rescue package with faster COVID vaccinations and a $1,400 payment to most Americans. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. We just have to choose between paying rent and putting food on the table. He's hoping the Senate can move quickly on economic relief while dealing with impeachment. Dealing with security is still a big issue here, too, with 21,000 National Guard troops headed to Washington, plus congressional Democrats asking for an investigation of what they now remember as an unusually large number of visitors at the Capitol the day before the attack. They think some of those visitors may have been scoping out the building. In Washington, I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. 
Meantime, Governor Gavin Newsom's calling on the National Guard to protect the state capitol ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration. Crews at the Capitol spent Thursday putting up a six-foot chain-link fence around the entire perimeter of the building. Newsom, along with legislative and law enforcement leaders, have vowed to protect those working and visiting the building following last week's riot in D.C. We're treating this very seriously and deploying significant resources to protect public safety, critical infrastructure, and First Amendment rights. But let me be clear, there will be no tolerance for violence. The governor, state emergency officials, and local law enforcement have not pointed to any specific threats, groups, or planned protests that they are anticipating. From our 17 follow-up file, a Bakersfield man is still fighting for his life in the hospital after a motorcycle crash killed his stepson. 13-year-old Nicholas Peterson died when the motorcycle he was a passenger on was hit by an SUV on Sunday near the corner of Hageman and Coffee Roads. The family says John Deal, the boy's stepfather, remains in critical condition in a medically induced coma. John's family has a GoFundMe page to help pay for hospital expenses. You can find that on our website, KGET.com. The boy's family says they are thankful for the community's prayers and support during this very difficult time. The family of a woman who died after she was hit by two hit-and-run drivers on Panama Lane earlier this week has created a GoFundMe for funeral expenses. Hermina Ariola Morales was hit by two drivers in the intersection of Panama Lane and Betty Street just before 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Police said the driver of a silver or white Mercedes sedan hit her. Then she was hit by the driver of a red Chevy Silverado. Both drivers took off. The family says Morales leaves behind her husband of 30 years, four children, and five grandchildren. We have that link to the GoFundMe on our website, KGET. Dot com. Meantime, anyone with information on the case is asked to call Bakersfield Police at 327-7111. And we've learned the name of a person who was hit by a car and killed earlier this week in Ridgecrest. 38-year-old Franklin Lawrence Forge Jr. was hit and killed just before 6 a.m. on Monday on West Bauman Road. The cause of the crash has not been released at this time. The Kern County coroner is still trying to identify skeletal remains found in downtown Bakersfield. The remains were found January 7th in a homeless encampment beneath the bridge near 24th Street and Buck Owens Boulevard. BPD said they appeared to belong to a man. The coroner has not released any information about the remains except to say further investigation is needed to determine the person's identity and cause of death. If you have information, you're urged to call BPD at 327-7111. Today marks 25 days since two young California City boys were reported missing. Three-year-old Orson and four-year-old Orrin West were reported missing December 21st. Wednesday night, more than 50 law enforcement personnel searched the area of Silver Saddle for nearly three hours. The search was prompted after Cal City received information about a white van spotted in the area the week the boys were reported missing. Police say nothing useful was found. Multiple rewards have been offered for information on the boys, totaling $80,000. If you have any information, you can call the California City Police Department at 760-373-8606, or you can remain anonymous by calling the Secret Witness Hotline at 322-4040. 17 Court Watch now. The Department of Justice has filed lawsuits against two local doctors, accusing them of discriminating against a patient with HIV. The department accused Dr. Chibuk Anucha and Dr. Umaima Jamaluddin of separate incidents where they refused to provide routine OBGYN care to a patient due to the patient's HIV status. Both doctors practice in Bakersfield, according to filing documents. According to the DOJ, the actions violated the Americans with Disabilities Act. KGET left messages with both doctors seeking comment, but we've yet to hear back from either. A victory yesterday for the rights of immigrants regarding freedom of expression. You may remember the case of Jose Bayo, a Bakersfield College student who was arrested and jailed by Immigration and Customs Enforcement after he spoke publicly at a forum against treatment by ICE. The ACLU filed a lawsuit against the government, alleging Bayo was arrested in retaliation for having publicly criticized ICE. A court initially rejected that claim, but yesterday the 9th District Court of Appeals ruled in his favor, affirming that immigrants, even undocumented, have the right to criticize the government. This means the immigration lawsuit may continue to move forward.
KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back in your business watch. A well-known Greek yogurt brand is branching out into coffee. Chobani's launching a new ready-to-drink cold brew coffee drink line. The new offerings are crafted with single origin cold brew and feature Chobani's oat milks and dairy creamers. They are available in four flavors, including sweetened and unsweetened. They are available grocery stores nationwide. Denny's is set to roll out two new virtual brands in the coming months. The South Carolina-based restaurant chain is known for its breakfast menu. Starting next month, 1,500 U.S. Denny's restaurants will be behind Burger Den on DoorDash, Postmates, and Herber Eats. It will also allow Denny's to sell burgers under that name. The other brand is called The Meltdown and will serve patty melt sandwiches. The Meltdown will be exclusive to DoorDash. More than half of Denny's domestic locations are expected to debut the virtual brand in the spring. Tons of new products were unveiled this week at the Virtual Consumer Electronics Show, and many of them were catered to our new pandemic world. NBC's Liz McLaughlin shows us some of the highlights. Face mask fashion is getting a high-tech upgrade with Razor's Project Hazel. It's cool to wear, it's super social, it's super safe. This clear N95 mask prototype has lights and a built-in speaker to prevent muffled conversations. In order to move forward, we have to adapt to our surroundings. Another for enhanced communication, the mask phone, which is exactly what it sounds like. You have a microphone inside the mask so you can be easily heard on a conference call. AirPop is launching its Active Plus mask this month with a sensor that tracks breathing and air quality. Or grab a purse-sized air purifier such as the Luft Duo. LG has some products too. They have mini air purifiers. So if you're concerned about just your environment at home and you want to bring one from room to room, there are much smaller solutions available than there have been. In addition to gadgets that purify and sanitize, more companies are integrating touchless features into everyday devices. This new Kohler toilet has hands-free flushing. And this no-ring doorbell from Alarm.com works with a weight-sensing doormat. There's even the Eddie doorbell that reads temperature. It would be good for either high-traffic environments or even just on a personal use. New products shaping a COVID-conscious era of technology. Liz McLaughlin. NBC News. 539 is your time now. Family, friends, and former students gathered yesterday to celebrate the life of beloved Bakersfield educator and community advocate John Hefner. Half a dozen people shared their reflections with attendees on a life well lived. For 30 years, John Hefner was principal of Fruitvale Junior High School. He loved his students and knew them all by name. He was intimately involved in every aspect of education and was the driving force behind Fruitvale's Powerhouse History Day program. Hefner loved to travel the world, never met a stranger, and spent a lifetime helping others. Things that I've heard from a handful of you since John passed are stories about how John helped you in your career or how John was so gracious to your parent or your child or how John helped you with a challenge, a particular challenge in your life. And you know, the thing that was remarkable is I had never heard one of those stories ever told to me before because John never, never tooted his own horn. He just went about his business uh, doing things for people. Hefner passed away two weeks ago at the age of 74 after a brief battle with cancer. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.